The Dodgers have yet again made a sneaky and underrated move. Astros continue to break baseball by signing Christian Javier to an extension that is dirt cheap. And then also we have to break down the Cubs offseason because they added yet another pretty good player. Now, before we talk about all of that, I do want to bring up the fact that the Blue Jays are changing Roger Center. I keep forgetting to bring this up, but a few weeks ago, we saw that the Tigers finally caved and they are bringing in the fences at Comerica, which is long overdue. Miguel Cabrera might have 800 home runs. Okay, that's exaggeration. But Miguel Cabrera even joked around like, hey, I'm going to be playing longer if you guys actually bring in the fences. That's exactly what they did. And I don't know if the Blue Jays saw the Tigers doing it and said, we want some of that as well. The white means what it was before. The black means the new dimensions. So they brought in left center field by seven feet, uh, two feet over here. Nothing changed in center field. But as you can see, the out outfield walls over here. So they brought in the outfield walls in terms of making them shorter, but they also raised them higher in length. So in theory, it should help out guys like Bo Bichette and Vladimir Guerrero Jr., guys that are kind of line drive hitters. They'll be able to still focus on driving the ball up the middle into the gaps, but now that the fences are seven to 10 feet in, I know the fences are a little bit higher as well, but those should result in higher home run rates for the Blue Jays, while at the same time trying to mitigate home runs allowed from Jose Barrios and you say Kikuchi if Kikuchi is even allowed to step foot in the rotation. So if you're a baseball fan, are you cool with major league teams changing their dimensions like the Orioles did last year? Because if we kind of face the facts, the Orioles, they gave up so many home runs in 2021 to the Yankees. And then in 2022, a lot of those home runs were taken away by that egregious and ugly wall in left. Luis Robert got a hanging slider, hung it in the left. Austin Hayes is there. Hey Are you sure about that? I cannot believe that the Astros have been able to storm back from 2017 and everything that happened and become one of the most well-run organizations in sports. And I say that because they just gave Christian Javier a five-year, $64 million extension. That is a dirt cheap for a guy that was in the Cy Young conversation and is only 25 years old. So this was the first deal made by Dana Brown, the new GM of the Astros. He was signed a few weeks ago. Now, the crazy part about that is we can see that Jordan Alvarez, he was traded for by a guy named Jeff Lanau. He was the GM before everything kind of hit the fan. He was fired, but he traded Josh Fields for Jordan Alvarez and one of the more lopsided trades in the history of baseball. So Jeff Lanau, he's not with the organization anymore. So they hired James Click. James Click makes a few good moves. I mean, he made a lot of great moves. And then a few days after winning the World Series, they part ways. I don't know if he was fired. I don't know if he resigned quit but yeah they're no longer working together and then of course Dana Brown the brand new GM his first ever move is getting Christian Javier on this dirt cheap contract I mean the Astros I don't know if they're taking a page out of the Braves book but maybe they're just gonna offer these guys low contracts and hope that they sign I don't know voodoo might be in place but I wanted to bring up Christian Javier because not only did he break out in 2022 but look at this little highlighted part of this website. So we have signed by Houston on March 18th, 2015 as a free agent from the DR, $10,000 signing bonus. That is all that he got, $10,000 to sign with the Astros. And nearly eight years later, he's turning that into almost $70 million. I tip my cap to Christian Javier. I mean, aside from having a 2.54 ERA and 194 strikeouts and 148 innings, he only allowed uh, no runs, no runs in the championship series, as well as the World Series. And that was only two starts, but in those two starts, he was completely dominant. He was nearly unhittable. Christian Javier is going to be good for a long time, and that's why they could afford to lose Justin Verlander. They have Hunter Brown. Hopefully, Lance McCullers is healthier and not as home run happy in 2022 as we saw what he did in the postseason. But yeah, the Astros, they'll be just fine even without key pieces like Justin Verlander because they can just do things like sign Jose Abreu because Jose Abreu wants a championship. They can give Christian Javier an extension and not blink twice. Now, we are going to talk about the Dodgers sneaky good move in just a second but I do want to recap what the Cubs have done because they just gave a contract to Michael Fulmer. Michael Fulmer over the last two seasons has a combined 3.17 ERA and a nine strikeouts per nine so he is going to be a solid addition to that bullpen for the Cubs and that just adds another piece to their pretty decent offseason. They've signed Dansby Swanson which is huge. They signed Jamison Tyon. They brought back Drew Smiley. I mean I really feel like the Cubs can make a little bit of noise. I mean they've 
giving money to Eric Hosmer. Trey Mancini is a very underrated move in my opinion. Cody Bellinger praying to the baseball gods that they can connect again with Cody Bellinger and fix his launch angle because he is just popping up everything when he's not striking out. And again, they've given money to Michael Fulmer. They brought in Brad Boxberger, Julian Merriweather before he got injured for the Blue Jays. He was on a warpath before he got injured. So I really feel like the Cubs, they could be sneaky good. And honestly, a lot of people are kind of writing them off as a C minus, C plus offseason. I'm borderline B, B plus, A minus. I don't know. The reason why I'm seeing a lot of people hate the Cubs is because they're kind of signing the lesser of all of the superstars. They could have gotten Carlos Correa, but they had to settle for Dansby Swanson. They could have gotten other star pitchers, but they settled for Jamison Tyon. So they're having a good and productive offseason. They are getting better, but could they have gotten even better by signing the upper echelon of stars? Probably, but as a Cubs fan, I guess I'm happy. Then again, you go from winning a World Series to losing Javier Baez, Chris Bryan, Anthony Rizzo in the next few years, and then now you have this team. So what do you think? Obviously, one more thing that we have to discuss, David Peralta, the former Dodger killer, is going to the Dodgers on a one-year deal, six and a half million dollars. We've seen David Peralta have some pretty good seasons, but we know that he's going to the Dodgers to do one thing. He is going to mash right-handed hitters. For his career, he's hitting 294 with an 840 OPS versus righties. He's got a bunch of extra base hits versus righties. He's pretty good at taking walks as well with a career 350 on base percentage versus right-handed pitchers. Back in the day when he played for the Diamondbacks. This dude was an extra base machine. I think he had a season or two of 40 plus doubles. And also he's led the league in triples, funny enough, two separate times in 2015 and 2021. And that's simply because where the Diamondbacks play Chase Field, their outfield is huge. So you're able to turn doubles into triples more often. But also I just want to correct, I'm looking at his stats right now. David Peralta has never had a 40 double season. I don't know where I got that from, but yeah, he's had seasons with 30 home runs and 25 doubles. He's been known to steal a few bags. So David Peralta, a very underrated signing. Now, the only thing that this could mean is that the Dodgers don't quite fully believe in James Outman, who in 13 at bats hit a home run and had a 462 batting average. I feel like James Outman is a really good athlete. He's going to be solid for someone. We just don't know if it's going to be with the Dodgers or not because they're shuffling so many pieces out there. I mean, right now they have Trace Thompson as the center fielder, David Peralta in left field. Of course, Mookie Betts is going to be in right. And then if we're talking about the bench, you have Chris Taylor as options. Jason Hayward was given a minor league contract. So we don't know if he's going to come up and make some noise. The Dodgers, I guess they're doing something pretty well and that's having a lot of options. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because again, David Peralta at one year, six and a half million dollars, you'll take that even though he didn't look very good with the Rays in the second half after being traded by the Diamondbacks. Six and a half million dollars, that's nothing to the Dodgers. They've lost quite a few pieces over the last few years. Max Scherzer, Trey Turner, Justin Turner, Joey Gallo, whether you like him or not, he's not on the squad anymore. A lot of pieces have been shuffling around, but they're doing their best. They're the Dodgers. They're going to still be there. But that does it for today's MLB recap. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like and subscribe because we do this pretty much every single day. And if you're bored, there's a video right next to my face that YouTube wants you to watch. So uh, watch it.